Last time on Instructions Not Included, I showed you how to create a 3D model from an image. Today, I'll show you how to turn that 3D model into this. Stick around. There is a visionary earth poet who I have recently come to cherish. Oh boy. What? With power and dignity, she boldly cried out so that all the cosmos would know of her suffering. Working nine to five for service and devotion, you would think that I would deserve a fair promotion. Want to move ahead, but the boss won't seem to let me. I swear sometimes that man is out to get me. In the spirit of her courage, please, Hear our voices. Thank you. Dolly Parton, still the queen of country music, 400 years from now. I read the other day that production is resumed for season three of The Orville. With any luck, we might see Captain Mercer and his crew again sometime in 2021. Now on with part two of my resin print tutorial. This one's long, so grab yourself a cup of your favorite show, settle in, I promise it's going to be worth it. In part one, I walk you through image selection, extraction of color layers, and conversion to a 3D model, all using free web apps. If you didn't see that, I'll have a link in the description below. Today, we'll be taking that image and materializing it using a few different methods, post-processing each one, and finishing them off with the hybrid epoxy paint method to give them a smooth professional finish. Primarily, I'm using 3D printing to achieve this. For a basic primer on 3D printing, there are two common types of consumer-grade 3D printers, FDM and SLA. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling, and more commonly referred to as filament printing. This involves long strands of thermoplastics extruded through a hot-end nozzle and laid layer upon layer. As each layer cools, it fuses with the one below it, creating a solid object. SLA stands for stereolithography, and it's more commonly referred to as resin printing. SLA printers use UV curable liquid resin in a vat with either a laser or an LCD screen, in my case, to draw the layer image at a fixed point on the bottom of the vat. As each layer cures, the model is slowly raised above for the next layer to be cured. In general, SLA printing is more capable of creating sharp, detailed prints than FDM. To 3D print a model, you must first run it through a program called a slicer. This will take the 3D image, cut it into hundreds to thousands of layers, all based on your parameters. Due to the inherent nature of 3D printing, many models will need support material to print properly. There's a lot of differences between the FDM and the SLA, but suffice it to say, each one has its own software tailored specifically for it. I'll be using Cura for the FDM prints and Chitubox for the resin. This is Cura with the model ready to slice. It will print best laid flat on the bed, so no supports are needed. For my resin printer, Chitubox is used. The resin printer is too small to print flat, so I've oriented the model vertically. Many people prefer angling the models to achieve their best prints possible. I've tested this already and it works fine fully vertical for me. You can see the supports needed to print it this way. Enough of me talking, let's get started.
The two FDM prints have finished off of the uh, 3D printers and both of them came out pretty decent. I'll show you here. This is the one off of the Ender 3 and you can see where some of these little tiny uh, stars are. It, uh, it didn't do such a great job for the TiVo Tornado, my original printer, which I think has my settings are much better. This one, I like. Uh, the little tiny stars that are gonna be a problem uh, are nice and solid. Um, I'm going to clean this up, remove some of this extra uh, brim and do a little bit of sanding and going to prime them up. sidewall of this that I want to fill it before I primer it up. Let's see if you can see that. And right in there you can see there's a divot that goes down in there. It's not completely flat and uh, because it is uh, dipping in it's not going to look very good as, a, as an itch. Uh, what I'm going to do with both of these See it on the Ender 3 as well. Some people like to use wood putty to fill in um, the, the places on the 3D prints. Um, other people like to use Bondo. I've used both. Uh, in this situation, what I want to show you is a product that I've not seen anybody else in the 3D printing community use, and this is PC7. PC7 is a two-part epoxy that fills uh, gaps very well, but it hardens much stronger than something like a wood putty. Uh, in addition, uh, it, with putting it on, um, Water does thin it out, but it doesn't affect the hardening of it. I'm going to use that in this situation. I've liked this since I've not seen anybody else use it. I wanted to kind of show it. Um, so here we go. The epoxy resin finished drying and I've sanded it off. Um, it's not completely smooth. It's, uh, there's actually still quite a bit of little kind of rough edges here, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the priming of these and hopefully we'll be able to get the smoothness uh, as I go with that. So here they are. We'll take these, we're going to take these and primer them, get them ready for painting. Uh, there will probably be a few uh, 
back and forth of sanding and priming, sanding, priming uh, for that edge area. Now we're going to work on the resin pieces. If you look here in the back, you should be able to see there are a lot of striations. I need to smooth this all out with sandpaper. Uh, some on the front, I'm not concerned about the stuff inside because this is going to be all covered with epoxy. Just the surface up here, I want to make it nice and smooth. The only other part is the way this was printed, um, the supports do leave some roughness. So I'm going to smooth out the edges all around the, the entire thing as well. resin prints have been sanded nice and smooth. I've gone through and uh, got them all prepped and ready for the spray paint. Uh, what I'm going to be using today is Design Master Super Silver Premium Metals One Coat Metallic Finish. This stuff, it does not thicken up. It's very light based uh, and it works uh, very well for what I'm intending to do. Huh? That's just great. All right, coming up next, we have Lieutenant Commander Bortus. Where is Bortus? I am Bortus. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. You actually sing? Well, get on up here, big guy. Let's show everybody what you can do. Good luck. <laughs> Lieutenant Beloy taught me this song. I will now sing it. Oh! Yeah! You will be silent! Is this, is this happening? I am sure.
Bridge to Captain. We're receiving a high-priority message from Admiral Halsey at Union Central. Send it to the briefing room. Now it's time to walk you through how I do my epoxy uh, resin painting process. What I use is a two-part, one-to-one ratio epoxy system. Uh, this brand is from Total Boat. They are highly uh, reviewed, highly prized for being very good quality. I've tried another brand, wasn't quite as good, so this is what I like to use. Then this gets mixed in with enamel paints and I have here uh, Tester's brand model paints. These work well, a bit expensive. If you are using straight basic colors, you might be able to find Rust-Oleum in the color you want. Both work really well. This is about $10 for this size and these little ones are two to three dollars. So if you can get the color you want, go with something such as a Rust-Oleum hardware store enamel paint. Other things that you would need, gloves. You need to be safe whenever mixing resin. You need containers to mix them in. What will happen with these, I'll use the small ones to uh, measure out my resin uh, parts, then they all go into a bigger cup and is mixed in very thoroughly. You can use popsicle sticks, tongue depressors for mixing. The way I apply these is to use squeeze bottles. And I have here three exa different examples of applicator tips. This one has a built-in applicator tip and it's a little bit smaller than the one here and then here is a thicker one and this can go on like that so this works really well to do bigger areas such as what i'll be doing around the center parts first then all you gotta do is pop this cap on and hit in those really thin uh, detailed areas You'll also need a scale when you're measuring these out because you want to make sure you get a proper one-to-one -one ratio. You want to use weight. You measure them out by weight, not by volume. The last thing is some sort of heat application, lighter. When we're done, I'll use this to go over the applied area and the heat will uh, bring any bubbles to surface and pop. you can pop those uh, to give a very clean, very smooth layer. The reason I like this is because these resins, this, or this resin, is self-leveling. When I mix in the colors, uh, the whole color is, is self-leveling, so when I put it in to my model, I know that it's going to it's going to smooth out and give me consistent professional look. There's not going to be any brush marks or anything like that. The last thing with that, that being said, is your table. You want to make sure that your table is level. If it's not level as this sets it up, it's going to go towards one side. It's going to go to the lower side. So That's it. That's the process. And watch the video montage of how we do this.
are done you've had the reveal and my takeaway on this overall the prints came out wonderful uh, the resin printers as I would expect are much nicer than the FDM printers and that's primarily because you have less post-processing to do with them and to be honest the post-processing I did with the FDM, pr FDM printers uh, it was a little rushed because I wanted to get this project out. Um, as example, this is one of the FDM prints and if you look close, I don't know if you'll see it here, you can see there's quite a bit of, uh, of little lines um, left in the silver. The edging that I added on was not, I didn't get it as perfectly round as I would have liked but it's still pretty awesome, I think. You might be wondering why I had two that were solid blue and two that were blue ring with black in the center. And that's because in looking at the images, there's a lot of variation in the show of how they make these or how they look. So I kind of went with both options. And to be honest, my favorite one is the black in the middle. As a side bonus, I have Chrissy here to, to show you a little something extra. Take it away, Chrissy. Thanks, James. I wanted to make a decal for my car, so I took James' SVG file and my Cricut and made one. Check it out! And that concludes the episode on taking an image, converting it into a 3D model, and then printing it out. And I hope you learned a lot. I hope you were inspired. And I would be curious to see what you take with this. A big thanks to those that have subscribed, liked the channel. Uh, we definitely appreciate your viewing. And to show that gratitude, I have four of these. I don't need four of them. I'm keeping one. Chrissy's going to keep one. I got two to give away. If you would like one of these, then in the description below, tell me one, why you like the Orville, or if you've not seen it, what did this inspire you to watch it? Two, what have you liked about this channel? Is there anything you would like us to do for you? I will select two people, two comments from the descriptions, and I will send you each one of these. 
That's it for today. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that jazz. Stay tuned. Chrissy's working on some stuff. I'm working on some stuff. And we'll see you later. Until then, keep making.